the 39th Tour de Course. And as the cars gleamed in the May sunshine under the statue of Napoleon, another French emperor was contemplating his chances. I don't know, I think uh, this year uh, it's, uh, it's very hard because there are a lot of drivers go very fast and it's diff difficult to, to see who must win uh, this uh, 39 uh, Rally Corsica. But OK, we try. And Oriol tried from the word go, despite a last-minute panic. Overnight, a new co-driver, Denis Giraudet, was thrust into the hot seat, replacing Bernardo Celli, who had to fly home for personal reasons. But the view from the bumper implied that all was under control. He began well, third fastest after the opening stages on the first morning. Championship leader Carlos Sainz had a less happy morning. The Subaru was experiencing transmission problems and the 1991 winner was struggling in seventh place. But the other great Gallic hope, Francois Delacour with Catherine Francois, made a superb start, joint fastest on the opening stage. Tommy Mackinnon was on his first Corsican rally. It was a debut two in the World Championship for the new Mitsubishi Lancer. Juha Kankinen was on his 100th World Championship event, only the third rally driver in history to achieve this century. He doesn't like the Corsican rally, but he was still fifth fastest on the opening morning. The British challenge came from Colin McRae, of course. His mission was to score useful points before his favourite events later in the year. He wasn't happy with his car's power early on, but was still holding an excellent fourth. The real surprise of the opening day was the performance of the Belgian Bruno Thierry in the Escort Cosworth, fastest on the opening four stages. It gave him a ten-second lead. Thierry is an accomplished tarmac specialist and has steadily improved all season. This would be his best chance of a win, and with Delacour in second place, Ford's fortunes look to be changing. So the Tour de Course moved north into more mountains, a stunning backdrop for the battle ahead. The second Mitsubishi was in the hands of another tarmac specialist, Andrea Aghini. He came third here last year. And a typically Italian approach to the tortuous twists and turns of Corsica from Piero Liatti's Subaru. No French rally would be complete without a little contretemps. Here, Isolde Holderied and Tina Turner get involved in a fracas over starting times. However, it all ended amicably with their Mitsubishi off in pursuit of the Group N and Ladies' Championship. At the afternoon service halt, one hot and bothered Carlos Sainz. The championship leader was still not happy with the Subaru's tarmac suspension. And so it was a quick change by the pro-drive mechanics while the Spaniard pondered about a disappointing day's driving. Things were more relaxed in the Toyota camp and Oriol was going well. Despite a different co-driver, the reigning world champion was nicely positioned in third place. And here was another happy Frenchman, Francois Delacour, second and driving brilliantly. But no one could catch Bruno Thierry. The 29-year-old Belgian had a few minor problems, but was still fastest on five of the day's eight stages. It was an outstanding performance that left him thrilled, but still surprised. Yes, I'm very happy to, to be in the lead now in, in, in Bastia after the, the first leg. And now uh, the, more, the big problem is tomorrow to start to be the, the first on the roads. For me, it's again something new and uh, we see. Thierry started where he left off, his escort a full ten seconds faster than his rivals on the opening stage of day two. Every dog has its day, and this looked to be Thierry's. The second-placed Ford of Delacour had a tougher job, holding off the challenge of Oriol. 
And this is the Delacour two-step. But the king of the Corsican roads was ready and waiting. Oriol, a five times winner of this event, was driving hard in third place. In the second Toyota, things were less happy. Kankan and steering problems of the first day were now about to worsen. He was struggling and highly critical of the Toyota's handling on this event. A new steering rack had to be fitted to the Celica, but it took 20 seconds too long and that cost him a full minute penalty. High school by nature, he was close to boiling point now. It wasn't a good morning for Toyota. Armin Schwartz got himself stranded on a mountain with alternator failure. Carlos Sainz fought hard to stay in contention. Piero Liati was also challenging for honours. He set fastest time on stage 12, his Subaru crackling with the effort. Blink and you'd missed him. Colin McRae was piling up useful points despite carrying number four, considered unlucky in Corsica. But Andrea Aghini couldn't quite build on his excellent first day. Suspension problems dropped him from fourth to sixth. Destra, tre, tre, meno, meno, attenzione. Mackinnon's new look Lancer moved into the top ten. It was a steep learning curve for the Finn, who's somewhat happier in the snow and ice. In Group N, Rui Madeira of Portugal was still the man to beat. After his win in his home country, he was flying the Mitsubishi flag to good effect here too. Rallying is all about teamwork. Whether it's rally leader Bruno Thierry and his co-driver Stefan Prevo, or four times world champion Juha Kankinen and his British partner. On our first run through a stage, uh, Juha dictates the notes to me. I take it down in my own shorthand, and then every other time from there on, I just read back to him. And we just make any alterations that are needed. 50, very long K right, opens the long medium right. 40, long bad left. For sure, if you, if you, 30, travel, if you get car sick, I mean, there's no way you can be a co-driver, that's sure. The temperature in the car, the braking, to and, and throwing. But, I mean, your concentration has to be on the notes, because one missed call, or one misheard call, and it could be all over. And long medium left. And very long fast right to crest. I have a lot of trust in each other. I mean, I trust him a lot, obviously, because he's driving, and also he's trusting me, because what I'm telling him is what he's driving. Turn a bit right, tight. Early morning start for a happy Bruno Thierry. Again, the consistent Belgian drove magnificently. He was fastest on the opening three stages, not even a puncture slowed him down. Colin McRae was still going, and team tactics moved him to fifth to keep his championship hopes alive. The spectacular coastline was just a blur for the drivers. Carlos Sainz held on to fourth spot in his Subaru. It hadn't been one of his vintage performances. He also settled for valuable championship points. Halfway through the season, he's still at the head of the driver's table. And an outstanding performance from Andrea Aghini in the Mitsubishi. He fought his way back to third place. The Italian hero repeating his podium finish of 1994. Francois Delacour, Francois Delacour impressed everyone with another remarkable drive. The man, written off after a road accident last year, was back to his best. The rally was heading for a dramatic finale. Oriol had passed Delacour with five stages of the rally left. He now set off in pursuit of Thierry. Realistically, he had little chance of overtaking him. The Belgian, meanwhile, had victory in his sights. For three days, his rally had gone according to plan. But with two stages left and a healthy 40-second lead, his Ford limped into a refuelling halt with a serious problem. Under controversial new servicing regulations introduced this year, the mechanics were powerless to help. Thierry struggled to change a wheel bearing himself and salvage his rally. 
it was not really a, a service. It was a, a refueling, and for the mechanics, it was not possible to to change the the, the parts. And uh, I have I tried to to repair by myself, but it was not possible. For the mechanic, it was not possible to to change the the part. And I think it was for them. It was only for sure only 10 minutes, 10 minutes to change this this part. And uh, now uh, it was not possible for us to to keep the lead. And now uh, we are out the race. Rallying can be a cruel sport. But Thierry's misfortune was Oriol's gain. The Frenchman was now heading for another win in Corsica for the sixth time to equal the record set by Bernard Darniche in the 70s. Despite the odds being against him this time, the former ambulance driver from the south of France had done it again. Didier, congratulations, a magnificent win. Oh, thank you, it's sure it's not easy rally. I think the strong man is uh, Bruno Thierry, but uh, okay, that's life, it's a rally. It's difficult for him, but sometimes, some year before, I, I lost some rally and I am leader, so it's life. So, victory for Toyota and Oriol by 15 seconds. Delacour second in the Ford, then Aguini and a trio of Subarus, and McRae still in with a chance in the championship. Didier Oriol clinches his record equaling sixth Tour de Course and could be in line for his second successive World Championship title.